Okay guys, coming at you with another video. Um, so this is something a little different today. Um, not guns or Humvee, uh, but this is my little uh, music studio. Um, so, as I'm finally starting to remember lately, the last couple videos, can you please like and subscribe? Um, at a minimum, it, please at least like this video, whether you do or not. But then that way, at least it'll get put out in front of other people and they get a chance to see it that they wouldn't normally see it. And then, you know, maybe they'll like it as well. Um, but that at a minimum, that really helps me out with the likes because then that gets it put. It, that's, you know, catches the, um, the YouTube uh, algorithm. All right. So what we got here is my little music studio. Oh, and I got my little beanie. Got that right there. Got that, ordered that off Amazon. Man, that thing came in like, I don't know, four or five days. And that was right around Christmas. So what I got here is um, an old school, um, oh man, I forget the name of this thing. Is it even on here? You know what? I. It's one of those... Um, Real popular, and like when this thing first came out, like it was, I mean, it was probably almost $2,000. But I mean, we're talking, you know, like way back in the 90s. So obviously the, uh, um, there's been a progression of um, engineering and um, all that stuff. So, and like this thing is really damn heavy too. Uh, but I got this from an old roommate of mine back when I lived in the bad place before I moved here. And, um, so it, the, and the keys, the keys are weighted, uh, which is obviously a really big thing. Um, but the main reason why I got this besides just being a full, a full keyboard, um, is this little joystick right here. This, this thing, um, it's very rare that, oh boy, kind of dirty there, aren't I? Um, it's rare to have those. And then to have a full a full functioning one because this thing goes in all directions. So anyway, so then on with this stuff here, I have um, that's the contact player, and then so I can use the the keyboard to trigger. So that's part of what um, makes this really good here to have. Uh, this right here is basically, well, this is my DAW, the digital audio workstation, and this is Machina. Um, so Machina is made by, um, Native Instruments, in which Native Instruments makes contact, and all these little goodies up here, well, obviously not that one, because that's Pro Tools, that's a whole different thing, Contact 5, which is what's on the screen right now, Battery, all all of these types of um icons yeah that's all native instrument stuff let me uh move this out of the way here because i got some more over there um but anyways so yeah i got a whole bunch of different things that do and like this one here the spectral layers oh my and then like this one amazing slow downer those two things right there are extremely impressive and valuable uh, tools for sound manipulation. Um, so anyways, uh, so that's contact. And then with contact, you can load in a ton of different, like, so you can go over here to the libraries. Actually, I'm in the libraries, manage lib, no. Um, let's see here. I always, I could honestly, I just barely get all this stuff set up. Um, let's see. It was in between the week of Christmas and, um, New Year's. 
before that, this stuff hadn't even been, been set up since I lived in the bad place, which was I moved here in September of 19. So I haven't even messed with this stuff in a few years. But now I have a legitimate reason to because I need background music for once I start doing all the overlanding videos. Um, so it is going to take me some time to... Um, get used to this again okay so normally you know what it's because i have i have um this loaded in here if i didn't have this loaded in here what happens is you have all the different instruments because uh, a lot of uh, hundreds of companies make plugins for contact and um and that's what you really want because you, when you get a lot of sound samples, they're just the one sound sample. So even if you hit the keyboard and do the different note, all you're doing is changing the pitch of it. You're like speed. Well, actually, I don't even think you're not even changing the pitch of it. Sorry. When you have all this stuff mapped out on the on a on the real on the scale, that's where it's all like each individual each individual thing is mapped out a different pitch. Um, but with sound samples, only thing you're doing when you're hitting the different spots on the keyboard um, is is you're speeding it up or slowing it down. So um, obviously, when you speed it up, it it'll sound a little higher pitched, but it's not really what's going on. So, anyways, um, after I got all this stuff set up, I did mess with it for a little bit for a few hours, and I came up with this little stuff here, which. We'll see how it, the phone picks it up. No, well, I wanted to stop that. All right, there it goes. Anyways, that's the little thing. I, I was just messing with it, just getting different random sounds and whatnot. Uh, I don't know how well the phone picked it up. Um, but that... Um, then I kind of, after I was, got it to where I stopped, I was like, you know, yeah, that's something that would be really cool for, um, parts of the video, um, or the videos. Yeah, I actually, I probably wouldn't have different music for every video. So for whatever video I choose to initially use that, that little sound sample or whatever, the few little bars I made, um, you know, obviously I would expand on that. It wouldn't just be that or probably wouldn't, but um, like that's really, it's kind of like a creepy haunting sound. So it's, that's something you'd pretty much just use, you know, when you're um, for the nighttime stuff, you know, because it, it creates, it creates that tension at night. Um, that's kind of how I um, envisioned using that. And it was just something I didn't set out to, to do something creepy and haunting to do for videos at night um, but that's just kind of how it worked out so um so anyways so you got your DAW over here so what's really cool about native instruments is because they saw how everything was going to uh, keyboard and mouse on the computer for DAWs and they wanted to bring it back to more old school um tactile so it's kind of a combination of both um, you can do everything you need to do on here, but when you have this coupled with it, it really does help you out in a lot of instances. Now, some, sometimes you have people that, um, cause you can actually just go and have this set up for live play and you can have your sound samples on here. So like that, oh, that's the pitch. So. Um, I have that set on pitch. Um, let's see here. Oh, there we go. That's right. I got to click on that. So when you click on these patterns here, you have like different, these different things here. So you can trigger each different one. Oh, that's going to be bass. You're not going to be able to hear it on those little speakers. 
Ooh, that's a loud one. <laughs> Even made my cat meow. So you can... People will have things set up to where and they have it on loops and you can play live, but I ain't trying to do all that kind of business. I'm not a DJ. Uh, I'm just using this stuff for uh, background music because you can't make, you know, which I hope to make some really nice uh, videos uh, with the overlanding. And you're going to need, I'm going to need to have some uh, a background score uh, because nobody wants to hear me talking the whole time like, how I am on these kind of videos, but different videos, different purposes. Um, and then you can't just have engine noise or it can't just be silent. You know, like when I have drone footage, it just all of a sudden I can't have this video. And then whenever I show drone footage, it's just silent. Like that's not going to work. So that's, that's where, you know, you got to be able to do some stuff. Now, you know what, you can go the route and, and, and get, um, you can pay pay for some music that's already made. There's royalty free stuff, but you know, um, I've I've had this stuff here well before. I, I mean, well before this Humvee was even in my head, before Overlanding was in my head. Like I started getting collecting and getting this stuff like oh, so many years back. Um, and but the reason why I never really mess with it. I never had like a driving force to push me. And so even though I desired it, the, the desire wasn't strong enough to push me to, to make it what I had to do. So like when I got the Humvee, oh man, like that, like you, even when it, like when it was snowing and stuff last year, like I was even suffering going out there and working for 10 minutes on it, doing a little something then coming in and put my hands in hot water and then going back out and back and forth multiple multiple times in a day because it was a driving force inside me that you couldn't stop. And now that I'm almost done with the Humvee and I've already messed with it so much, I'm a, a little more hesitant to go out there when it's freezing as hell um, because I am just kind of like at the tail end of everything. Um, but the driving force to get it done is still there. Uh, right now, I'm just held up by by money to buy a few things that I need uh, to finish the interior. Um, so in the meantime, well, what have I done? I've done the video on the uh, the rear deck and then the the um, the troop cover where I finished the insulation and I did the the waterproofing on it. And so you know that's that's all stuff that was really important to do. So it's like, okay, you know what? I can do this during this kind of weather and I don't have the money to do the interior stuff, but I at least want to keep productive on it. So I keep trying to churn away as much as possible. All right. So anyways, this contact is an amazing um, piece of software. I, it really is. And this right here, this kinetic metal stuff, it's a trip. So um, I kind of already played with this a little bit. Um, this is called, this particular one of, of these uh, presets that's over here. Um, it's called, where'd it go? Oh, Tractor Gears. So if you go and click on a thing, but if you hold it, so watch. Okay, so it just plays its sound and it stops like that. But if you hold the key down, so that's where this motion can turns this on and off and you can link it to where this this will spin with this one um i forget what this does here but i have it clicked on um, so like this here, you can mess with these down here with the effects. You can uh, mess with the spectrals, the circulate, um, circulate, all these different things you can mess with. And then when you hit the key and then hold it, then you get the outcome of 
how you've adjusted things. So, like, there's that one. Um, let's see. Sword. So, actually, you have to go here. Mute that. And then unmute this. Because otherwise, both that one and the other one will play at the same time since they're both loaded. Hopefully you guys can hear that. So I let go of it because I was going to move this down. Oh yeah, so you can, on this one here, you can do like this. You can change that, change the shape. So see how that bounces around? Because that has to do with the shape and how that was changed. So when you do that and then trigger it. See now it goes smooth. But then it changes too because you can do the wave, um, the wave, different things like that. So anyways, um, yeah, this thing is, is really cool. There's so much, um, so many different things you can do with sound manipulation. And, uh, yeah, that, that's having the background music, you know, the background score is, is really important if you want to do high quality videos. And, you know, like I am really new to a lot of this stuff. Um, and so, you know, even though I've, I've been collecting this stuff for years, like I was saying a, a little bit ago, it's something where I never had an overwhelming um, push to, like, I have to do this. I have to do that. I have to do that. Like, you know, like, even when I play Call of Duty, it's like, oh, my gosh, like, I love playing that. Um, and I'll just play it for hours and hours. And, you know, that's there's a little bit of a, I guess you could say like an addiction there kind of a thing. Um, for me, though, a lot of stuff is, um, it's a, it's a, it comes from a competitive nature. So with Call of Duty, like, I think a lot of the drive for that is, um, is competition. Because I'm trying to kill other people. I'm trying to do better than I did last time. Have my best match. Get really good at using this gun or that gun. Um, different things like that. So I guess it probably falls under a little bit of addictive. But for me, it's all it's all like competition based. Even when I used to play basketball back in my early 20s and my early 30s. Nothing stopped me from playing basketball. People like at a job. Oh, hey, we need you to stay late to do this or that. Uh, no, sorry, find someone else. I I play basketball after work, and that's what I did for like nine years straight. And the only thing that ever stopped me from doing that was having a twisted ankle so bad I couldn't run around, um, or the the big gym that I played in. Um, because it was like, you know, two courts and all wood floors, legit, um, you know, college uh, backboards and rims, the whole deal. And uh, but sometimes that big place would get rented out, you know, for the night or something for like a banquet or or whatever. And uh, which that kind of stuff only happened maybe a couple times a year. Um, and then like every maybe four or five years, they would have the floors resurfaced. And uh, other than those things, oh, and that would totally ruin my whole night, too, and I'd be pissed off because I couldn't play, even though when you look back on it, it was like, yeah, dude, that only happened, like, once every four years for the floor, or five years for the floor, and then, like, the place being rented out only happened once or twice for the year. So, really, it, it shouldn't have been any big deal, but the, the competitiveness is so ridiculously high, Um uh, anyway, so that follows me with the different things that I do, whether it's um, competing in Call of Duty or whether it's building a Humvee, um, building stuff like I take that extremely serious. I 
I mean, I go for it. Like when I'm when I'm doing stuff. Oh my gosh! Like the it, it the whole day just goes by like nothing. And I'm like, oh yeah, I started at 10 a.m. and it's midnight now, and I've literally been working on a piece of that project that whole time. Like I stopped to get something to eat. You know, I had to stop a handful of times to pee. Other than that, like I'm, like I'm just in it. So, anyways, here you guys go. Um, another long video, twenty minute, a little over twenty minutes. Um, but yeah, this contact and the different stuff you can do with it, um, it really does bug me that I'm trying to. I guess I just have to close it out. And open it again. Let me do that. Just so you guys can see the types of things that are on there. Okay, so this is what I was trying to get to here. Um, so you have all these like 60s drums, 60s drums, 60s drums, 70s drums, um, 80s drums, modern drum, Abbey, Mo Abbey Road uh, modern drum, strings, all the different... Well, you know, the, the symphony stuff, all the different types of strings, stringed instruments and whatnot. Alicia's Keys, obviously that's piano stuff. Um, Berlin Concert Grand Piano, uh, Cinematic Strings, Damage, um, Evolved Mutations 1 and 2, and this other one, it's a number 2 something. Anyways... And visitors, that's kinetic metal. That's the one I was had on earlier. This stuff is is crazy. What all you can do with it? Um, yeah, ba all these bass guitars, um, more keys, strummed acoustic sessions, session horns. This is really powerful as well. Uh, so's the session strings pro as well. These drummers. Um, yeah, and then you got some these unicorder, uh, which I think that's like a some kind of a custom made instrument, if I remember correctly. So we got West Africa. Um, so obviously that's all kinds of different sounds related with that. Um, how does that work? I see. I think I gotta I gotta open up. There we go. Percussions ensemble. Okay, then you gotta just go in here and pick. Uh, I don't even know what the hell any of these are. No. Oh. Okay, so this the highlighted ones are the ones that are. So the notes were. Triggering the different instruments. Okay, so I'm not sure what this is down here. Oh, it actually only triggers when you do it with a keyboard, so it must be something special. Oh, shit. All right, there you go. Hold it down. Okay, so the green is a single. Okay, so those, the the purple and the green are just uh, singles, and the yellow and the red are. Anyways, there you go. Just a little bit of fucking around there. Um. But yeah, so you have all kinds of different things you can load into this. And the contact is really a very, very powerful unit. And then you can also go and then load contact directly into here. So I can go and drop into one of these. One of these right here I can drop or, or like in a group pattern. I forget. It's been so long. Um, I can. Yeah, yeah. So like in like this group I can and I can make another group. Group D. I can literally go and um, 
have an instance of contact, like the whole contact, boom, right there on this. So then you can have the contact doing stuff in here along with all the different patterns and stuff that you do with the library. Th this has like probably like eight gigabyte library or nine gigabyte library of stuff just, just for Machina alone. But then you can go and add the other stuff from contact, from battery. Battery battery is, um, uh, ooh, I think that's all kinds of drums and stuff like that. Or is that massive? I know there's some like artillery sounds and stuff like that with battery too. Um, battery as well. Um, but anyways, yeah, there's so much stuff here and I'm really going to have to spend a lot of time in the future to, to do this. But um, it's pretty cool, you know, developing interesting stuff like this for, um, for the videos that I'm doing. And it really, you know, having the music, it makes everything come to life. Because when you think about it, anything you watch in a movie theater, on TV, um, like there's some kind of music in the background, normally called a score and, or always called a score. Um, but that background music, like, it's just one of those things. People just don't like to just hear silence. And I'm not sure now you can go and you can have silence to create tension. Um, as long as the music creating tension as well. So, you know, but it's really interesting how, how all that stuff works. And, um, you know, I, I'm at the very beginning of all this stuff still, even though I've had this stuff for quite a while, but I've, this will be the first time that I've ever really, really gone deep into it to, to try to make some good stuff. And, um, I guess we'll find out if I have the ability or not, you know, I mean, I, I guarantee I can at least make something that's halfway decent. Um, but I'm too competitive. Like, uh, it'll be very, very hard to me to, to put something out there with those overlanding videos that is just decent. Um, that, that would be a struggle. Now, granted, I might think it's a lot better. Like, oh, man, well, check this out. I made this and it's really awesome. And maybe I really believe that it's awesome. But you know what? It really kind of... In that case, it really matters what other people think. Because if only five people in the world agree that what I made was awesome, mm, and it's not really awesome then. You kind of need the agreeance of a lot of people to like, yeah, that is awesome, you know? So we'll see. And time will tell. But all I can do is give up my effort and go for it. So uh, I will catch you guys later.